Okay, in this lesson we're talking about one-to-one -one functions and that's a set of coordinates that don't have the same x or y values. Now if they don't have the same x, um, then it's not a function. And that was our definition of a function. You had to have the same um, or different x values. It didn't matter what your y values were. But if it's going to be a one-to-one -one function, both the x and the y values have to be different. So an example of this is a set of points would be the set 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 7. And if you notice, all of the x values are different, and then you turn around and you look at the y values, all of them are different. So this is a one-to-one -one function. However, if you look at this set, we have the set 1, 2, 3, 2, and 4, 7. And this set you have different x values, so it is a function, but it's not a one-to-one -one function because the twos are the same in these two coordinates. So it's not one-to-one -one because of that. Now when we talk about one-to-one -one functions, we can also look at the graph of a function and use the horizontal line test. And with that, it's very similar to the vertical line test. Um, and the horizontal line test tests for one-to-one. -one. Vertical line test, remember, was testing to see if it was just a function or not. And so if you're given a graph, you can tell whether it's a function and whether it's a one-to-one -one function by doing these tests. So for example, if I have this picture of well, kind of a parabola, um, if I do the vertical line test and run vertical lines all the way through it, the function never doubles over on itself. So it is a function, but if I do the horizontal line test on it, notice it's going to hit here and here at the same time, so it's not one-to-one. -one. But if you restrict the domain and take a look at this graph, in other words, we don't let the whole function be shown but just half of it, now this is a one-to-one -one function. It passes both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. The definition of an inverse function, or to tell that you have one, is if you take the composite function, f dot f inverse, or f inverse of f of x. Either way, this is written this way as well, both answers have to come up x. And <clears throat> we use the f inverse just to show that there's a relationship between the f function and the, um, its inverse. So that relationship can be seen two ways. In a chart, if I know the values for f of x, for example, 2, 4, 3, 6, 4, 8, then the inverse function are just the values of x and y inverted. So we swap the y's for the x's. And we come up 4, 2, 6, 3, and 8, 4. Okay. So in part of the homework, you were asked, well, if f of 2, for example, equals 4, then f inverse of 4 has to equal. Now we can see by our chart here, and we don't need the chart, but you can see by the chart that if f of 2 equals 4, then f inverse of 4 would have to equal 2. And even if we didn't know what the values were, if f of 5 is equal to 20, let's say, then f inverse of 20, well, just because you're swapping, I mean, they're, just because they're inverses means you're just swapping the x's and y's. So f inverse of 20 will give you 5. The other thing is I can find f dot f inverse of a number. Like, well, let's change that to 6 for right now. Okay, so this is the same as f of f inverse of 6. Well, again, I can use my chart here. f inverse of 6 is just another name for 3. So f of 3, then, I come back here, is 6. And notice what happens. They, it just undid itself. What answer was here is the same as here. So if I do that again, you know, f inverse of f 
of 4, for example. I should predict the answer is 4, but I can actually see how this works. This is f inverse of f of 4. Well, f of 4, according to our chart, when x is 4, the value coming out is 8. f inverse of 8, according to my chart, is 4. So the number that's in here is coming out here. So even again, if I don't know what the number is, I know that these two functions undo each other. And the answer here is just going to be 10. Okay, the other thing is how to find an inverse. And there's four steps to doing this. One, change f of x to y. Second step, swap all x's for y's and y's for x's. Seems like a strange step, but this is actually going back to this idea of the t-chart up here where you're swapping your x's and your y's around. That swap that you're doing algebraically is going to allow you to do this swap here. And then the next is solve for y. And then the fourth step is rename y. Call it now the inverse, f inverse of x. That's what you were looking for, to find the inverse, f inverse of x. So at the very end, that's what you're going to call it. So we're going to do an example here. We've got f of x equals 5x plus 2. Okay, so step one, change f of x to y. Step two, swap your x's and your y's out. So anything that was a y now is called an x. Anything that was an x called y. And that's for all, if there were more than one x here, all of them would be changed. And then in your next step, solve for y. So first you're going to subtract 2 from both sides. And then as a last step, divide by 5. So you've got the y by itself. And then rename y f inverse of x. That's just kind of the finishing touch on it. Um, just so that we know that the inverse function and the function are related to each other. Now you can check it, because remember f of f inverse of x should equal just the x. So I'm going to take f inverse of x, circle it, and that's the one that's going into the f of x function all the way back up here. Plug it in. So this is 5 times x minus 2 over 5 plus 2. Right. I'm going back to this function, 5 x, take out the x, the plus 2 is still there. And now, simplify it. So you have x minus 2 plus 2 does equal x. So that's part of the check. The other part of the check is that f inverse dot f also has to equal x. Sometimes they'll put the x here, sometimes they won't. But the idea is the same. Take the second function, circle it, so we come back up here, now I'm taking 5x minus 2 and putting it into the function down below. So now use the one that's been circled, or the, uh, the one that the arrow is pointing to, and plug into that formula. So I'm going to plug in the 5x plus 2, minus 2, divide by 5. And you get 5x, the 2's cancel, and the 5's cancel and your answer is also x. That's part one of the lesson of inverse functions. We'll do a part two here um, in just a moment.